here, so I'll take my first problem, negative 9 minus 4. I like thinking negatives in terms of money because I don't have any, but I'm trying to stay out of the hole like a negative. If I already owe you $9, negative 9, and now minus, so I'm borrowing 4 more, suddenly I owe you 13, so I've got a negative 13 there. Can I bring the rest of the problem down? Now, right here, I have negative 13 minus negative 3, minus and negative, so it's, it's minus and negative is like taking away what I owe you. So I'm actually adding. Remember, we got minus and negative right next to each other? That's the same as that. So now I got negative 13 plus 3. So you can say, well, I owe you $13, but I paid you back 3. So now I only owe you 10, so I'm at negative 10. Now, same concept in this last step. I got negative 10 plus 6. I owe you $10 plus, so I gave you 6 back. I still owe you 4. Negative 4. Did you get All right. Most of you did. I think the couple that didn't just forgot the last piece on it is what it looked like. So you essentially paid back the $9. You still owe the $4. Yep. So I still owe. Yep. Shouldn't have never borrowed that. All right, so you see it's going to be pretty easy today. And I, I don't remember if I told you yesterday or not, but I'm going to try harder to be more specific with what we're doing every day this year. Last year I just like had one word up there. So I'm trying to be more specific so you can kind of follow along and get excited when we're getting close down to the bottom, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you ought to see pretty simple stuff. Just review over signs because we always forget all that. So if I'm looking here, I'm going to throw you three addition problems. So get your notes ready to go, doing some real number operations. Martha froze up, so we'll give it a minute. There it is. Uh, we'll look at number one here, negative six plus negative fifteen. We're gonna look at negative one point one plus negative one point two. Throw some decimal and then how about a fraction? Great idea. Negative three fourths plus negative five eighths. All right, so we've got three basic addition problems we'll talk through right there. Everybody ready to rock? Hey, it's only Wednesday, and I'm tired. So got to get back in the swing of things. Are y'all making it better than me, I hope? Yeah, I'm not going to work every night. I'm going to say you need more. The negative five weeks? Yeah, negative five weeks, yeah. All right, so... Rule here when we're adding with positives and negatives. When we're adding, if the signs are the same on what we're adding, we're just going to add them and take that sign. So luckily, if I look here on number one and it's true throughout, I gave you the same signs. So same signs, we just add the digits. So we say, what's 6 plus 15? If we don't know, we can count it on our fingers. 6 plus 15 is 21, right? And then since they were both negative, my answer is negative. So when the signs are the same and it's addition, you add them and you take that sign. It's that simple. All of these are that case. So here on number two, they're both negative. It's an addition problem. So I'm going to add them. Be 2.3, right? They're both negative, so my answer is negative. Okay? Easy review. Then on the fraction one, before I can add those without, uh, in my, just in my head like that, I need to get a common denominator. So I'll throw you a curveball here, and it's a toughie, isn't it? What will 4 and 8 both go evenly into? 8. So this one, to make that 4 and 8, I've got to multiply it by 2. So I multiply the whole thing by 2. So that would be negative 6 eighths plus negative 5 eighths, right? Now, when you add a fraction, do you add numerators and denominators, tops and bottoms? No, just the numerator. So the bottom is going to stay the same. So it's going to be over 8 and then 6 plus 5. They're both negative, so my answer is negative. I didn't need the floaty today. I got this. I'm an adding champion. As long as it doesn't go over 20. Like I said, I don't have no fingers and toes. Different signs. How about it? Great idea. Joke. Different signs. I got 3 plus negative 7. And then I got negative 3 plus 7. 34 this time. Here's my decimal one. Negative 3.8 plus 4.6. And my fraction one. Negative 3 eighths 
plus a quarter. All right, so there's still all addition problems. You can glance down through all four of those there and see that they still all have the addition sign. What's different this time, though, is that both terms are different signs, positive and negative wise. If I look here on number one, I got a positive three and a negative seven. Can you describe with words the rule for what we do when we add and they're different signs? You are going to take the sign of the bigger digit, yes. So I know my number one answer is going to be negative. Good, that's one important thing. What else? Good. When the signs are different, even though it says addition, it's actually subtraction. Y'all remember that? So we look here, and I'm just going to say, well, 7 minus 3 is 4. Like them said, 7 is larger, and it's negative, so my answer is negative. Always take the sign of the larger number, the larger digit. And to be mathematically correct, you'd say the larger absolute value. I just say digit a lot of times. Okay. That's the same type of problem all the way through there. You've got different signs. So number 2, negative 3 plus 7, they're different signs. It's addition. So we really subtract. 7 minus 3 again is 4. Which one's larger, 3 or 7? Seven? 7. 7, it's positive, so my answer's positive. We're freaking geniuses. I don't like to say that, I just said it. Number 3. Decimal, doesn't matter. Addition with different signs, so I'm going to multiply. No, what am I going to do? Subtract. So 4.6 minus 3.8, I think that's 0.8. Is that right? Check me out. Okay. Positive or negative, which is larger? Positive. There you go. All right. Got to get a common denominator, get on the last one. And it's an easy one again, same as 8 and 4 again. So the, this one will stay negative 3 eighths. To make 4 and 8, I got to multiply it by 2. So I need to multiply the top by 2. Okay, so different signs. I subtract them. 3 minus 2 is 1. Will it be a positive or a negative 8? Negative, because 3 is bigger than 2. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, everybody good on our addition? We did the same signs, we did different signs. Everybody all right on adding real numbers? That was bullet number one up there. Check. All right, let's subtract some now. Here we go. Subtract. Got three up through which you start off. 12 minus negative 5. Negative 11 and a half. Minus negative 6.3. And then three fourths minus negative two thirds. All right. When uh, a while ago, I mean it's been ten years ago, I guess it's been a while ago when I used to teach middle school math, and this was big in middle school math. This was one of the the main struggles was learning your different rules for your positives and negatives and everything. So we'd have to write out all the rules and try to memorize them and learn them and everything. And my analogy, and, and y'all know y'all heard me say it with y'all before, back in the dark ages, the math geeks got together and had a math party and made up all these math rules. Well, addition did real good and made up those addition rules that I just talked about. Then it got late and subtraction got tired. They didn't want to make up their own rules. So they said, we're just going to change our problems to addition and use their rules. Okay, so they, they were the cheaters like that. So what that means here... You can take any subtraction problem at all, and it's the subtracting is the same as adding the opposite. Right? Like, look at look at this. If I had 2 minus 1, isn't that the same as 2 plus negative 1? So subtraction is always the same as adding the opposite, isn't it? So you're not, you're smart enough, you're not going to have to go through that step every time, but I'm, I'm going to for today, because that's the, the review that we're supposed to look at. So on number 1 there, if I wanted to change that to an addition problem, I would say that's the same as 12 plus, what's the opposite of negative 5? 5. 17. For the first term, you don't change its sign. Okay? So here on number 2, I'm going to say negative 11 and a half plus, what's the opposite of negative 6.3? 6.3. I forgot my negative after I just told you don't change the first one. Okay, so now... It's not just as simple as the first one because now it's got different signs. 
So this is what subtraction said. Ha ha, we get to steal additions rules. And it turns it back to subtraction. It's like a horrible circle that keeps going. So what do I do with that when it says add, but it's got different signs? Subtract them at a kid. So was that 5.2? Will it be a positive or a negative 5.2? Negative, because 11 was larger and it was negative. Alright, I asked for a harder denominator on the last one this time. What will 4 and 3 both go evenly into? 12. So let's make those dudes both be 12s to start with. Alright. Uh, to get a 4 to 12, I had to multiply by 3. So I'm going to do 3 times 3 on the top. To get a 3 here to 12, I had to multiply by 4. So I'm going to do 2 times 4 on the top. Okay, so now all I did, that set just got me a common denominator. Now I'm going to rewrite it as an addition problem. This will be the same as 9 twelfths plus the opposite of negative 8 twelfths is positive 8 twelfths. 9 plus 8 is 17 twelfths. So I'm glad I don't have that plug in with that. I was praying yesterday for six period. Now, again, if I had seen this problem originally, the one I, number one up there that I just circled, I would not have done this. That's, that's just the rule mathematically how it works. What I would have done was like I did on the video bell ringer. I would have remembered the trick my teacher taught me that when there's a minus and a negative right next to each other, it's the same as plus plus. That's what I would have done. Y'all remember that? Ever heard that before? Yeah, people have told me that before. Okay. All right, so here we go. This one, throw three more at you here. Oh, just two this time. They're going to be a little bit bigger. Two more at you. Negative six minus negative two minus eight. Just more like the bell work, minus one. And then number two down here, I'm going to do negative three minus grouping symbol bracket. Great to see. I know it's getting complicated. All right. Like we did on the bell work, on number one up there, the only signs I see are subtraction. So I don't have to worry about order of operations. So when it's all subtraction, I'm just going to work left to right. So I'm going to go and take the first two terms and do the operation that needs to be done on that. So looking here, I'm saying negative six minus negative two. What about that, is that good? So far? Okay, now my next term, I'm gonna bring that down and do what it says. So I'm gonna look at negative four minus eight. Now you can do that a couple ways and you could write it as an addition problem like we did, or this is one when, like on the bell ringer, the money thing comes to my head. Negatives, I, I owe you four dollars, I need to borrow eight more. So now I owe 12. Good. And then I got one piece left, so I'm going to bring that down. It says to subtract one from that. That gum it, I'm getting deeper in the hole. I owe 12, I need another dollar. I'm going to owe 13. I don't want to be insulting you here because this is something you've been doing for about five years now. So I'm trying to go fairly quickly with it, but I need to make sure you're understanding. Everybody remembering, coming back to you okay? All right. Okay, down there on number two, through the grouping symbols in there. So what does that tell me I need to do? Do that part first, good ma'am. So inside that bracket, I've got negative seven plus 15. What's negative 7 plus 15? 8. eight. It's just 8, right? Because the 15 is bigger and it's positive. So just 8. But it had that, that's what you're talking about, Morgan. It had that minus sign in front of it. You're ahead of me. So that's what we're looking at now, right? Okay, so all subtraction. Let's left to right. What's negative 3 minus 8? Negative 11. Now bring down your minus 6. Okay, negative 17.
Alright, so we are out on bullet one and two up there. We can add and subtract real numbers. Band tab elastic. Where's it going to Alright, let's look at finding the distance between two points. Well, I wanted to know what's the distance between those two points, negative 12 and negative 1. Alright, let me show you. I'm not going to show you to do this every time because it'll take forever, but let me show you here. Alright, so I'm looking for the distance between those two points. So since I went through the trouble of putting them all on the number line up there, the thing I would do now would just be to count, wouldn't it? Okay, so to get from, it doesn't matter which end you go from, to get from this point to that point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there was 11 things in between those. So is the distance between those 11 or a negative 11? Good, it's positive 11. Remember, distance is never negative. Okay, distance is always measured positively. If we're building a house and we measure a board and say that's negative 6 feet, will you cut that for me? They ought to pick it up and hit you with it. You don't measure a negative 6 foot board. If you're driving your car backwards, the miles don't come off. Distance is always positive. Okay, how could we do that without drawing the number line? Okay, good, it's subtraction. So what I'm going to look at there, find the distance, I'm going to say, and since distance is always positive, what mathematical thing does that bring about? It's got bars all around it. Absolute value, very good. So that's going to be the same as the absolute value of negative 12 minus negative 1. Subtraction of both of them. Okay, so we work that in there. We say, what's negative 12 minus negative 1? Negative 11. And then what's absolute value? Negative 11. Bam. So, would it be faster to do what Morgan said? She took the absolute values first. She just said 12 minus 1. That works. No problem. I like it how the lights go out automatically so it looks like there's... Oh, oh it's dark out there. Oh. It's all the lights over the summer. That's are automatic. Now, if somebody will walk down the hall in a minute and the lights will come on. What was on? Coach Kelly yesterday was watching me on his class and like, it was so dark to turn off all the lights on us and then lamps and how we go in the bedroom dark and I was like, oh. Alright, let's do another one of those and then we'll hit the next bullet. Let's do two more of those. I'm going to let you do two on your own real quick. Find the distance between 8 and negative 4. And then find the distance between negative 4 and negative 6. So we can do those two real quick. Find the distance between 8 and negative 4. And find the distance between negative 4 and negative 6. Morgan, I don't think that trip works on the first one this time, does it?
You got it? Yeah. Wait a minute. Twelve. Everybody got that? Good job. Should make some sense to you. You're going from a positive all the way to a negative number, so you're traveling a bigger distance on that. Okay, so if we did, I set it up in absolute value bars, it would be absolute value of 8 minus negative 4. 8 minus negative 4 is the same as 12, so the absolute value of 12 is 12. Good job. All right, now, these, and use some common sense about it so it'll, you'll know if you're completely off track. So when I look down here at number 2, I'm thinking in my head already, well, those things are pretty close on the number line. So I shouldn't be expecting a real big distance between negative 4 and negative 6, should I? Okay, and how far apart are negative 4 and negative 6, Angie? They are two units apart. She caught herself or she got smacked with a 2 by 4. They're two <laughs> units apart. Okay, if you set that up, it would be an absolute value of negative 4 minus negative 6. Negative 4 minus 6, this changes to a plus plus. So you're looking at negative 4 plus 6, which is 2. And the absolute value of 2 is 2. That should make sense because all you got there on your number line, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, right? 1, 2. All right, so we find the distance. Everybody good? We're getting there down to the next bullet point multiply. All numbers are right next to each other. My parentheses is just there to kind of um, not get you confused with your negatives. They're all right next to each other, which means multiply. And since I told you we're on the bullet, proof, bullet point that says multiply, that, that was a clue. So number one, we got seven times negative two. First thing I'm going to do is just multiply my absolute value. So what's seven times two? Fourteen. Now what's our rule with signs on multiply? Since seven's bigger and it's positive, my answer's positive. No, different signs is always negative. That's multiply and divide. Multiply and divide sign rules are different, remember, from addition and subtraction. If they're the same signs when you multiply and divide, it's positive. If they're different signs when you multiply and divide, it's negative. And that'll work every time unless there gets to be more of them. Like right now there's two. If I had given you three digits to multiply, that could be a little bit different. We'll look at that here in a minute. Okay, so number two there. That says negative 0.9 times negative 15. Before I'm worried about what 0.9 times 15 is, is that result going to be positive or negative? Positive, very good, because they're the same signs. Negative times negative is positive, all right? So now figure out what is 0.9 times 15. Okay. Uh, all over the school is here. 9 times 5 is 45. Carry my 4. 1 times 9 is 9. Plus 4 is 13. I've got a decimal with one digit behind it, so I move my decimal point one time, 13.5. Now, let me, um, this, this doesn't have anything to do with today's lesson, but I can't leave that. Let me try to make some sense out of that to you. 0.9 in a percentage, if you got a grade that was 0.9, what percentage would that be? 90%. 90%. So you got almost all of it. You did well, right? So if I'm looking for almost all of 15, does 13.5 make sense? Yeah, I got I only missed one and a half. I got 13 and a half out of 15. So that's that's pretty good. That's just another common sense way to check yourself. If I had messed up and moved my decimal point too many times and had 1.35, 1.35 wouldn't be almost all of 15, right? So it's just some common sense stuff you can do to check it out. Alright. Got a fraction there on the last one. First off, will my answer be positive or negative? Negative, because they're different signs, so we know we're going to have a negative. Now, my way of multiplying these, and I did this with you in Algebra 2, 16 is the same as 16 over 1, true? So I can diagonal reduce this 16 over 8 right there. What's 16 over 8 the same as? 2, right? So now I'm just looking at negative 5 times 2. Negative 10. You got it. Start small. Alright, 
when we get into division here, the rules for signs are the same. If the signs are the same, it's positive. If the signs are different, it's negative. But we're going to have to, um, at some point, talk about reciprocals when you do division. So have that in the back of your mind, and we'll discuss that when we get there. First division one I've got here says negative 15 divided by negative 3. So that's pretty straightforward. That's okay. This one, second one here is where we're going to have a little bit more issues. Negative 3 eighths divided by 11 sixteenths. And then one more down here. We'll do 3 fourths right this way divided by negative 7 sixteenths. So we're going to different for you there. Okay, division, the sign rules are the same. So on number one, negative 15 divided by negative 3. Will my answer be positive or negative? Be positive because they're same signs. Negative by negative is positive. So that's an easy one after that. What's 15 divided by 3? 5. Everybody good on that? Okay, on number two, where it's still division, but we're dividing fractions. We've got a fraction divided by a fraction. Okay? Anybody remember any rules about a fraction divided by a fraction? Yep. What, and what do you do? Good. Good, Angie and Joe. We're going to multiply the reciprocal. So our numerator, the number on top, is going to stay the same. Negative 3 eighths will stay the same. And then I'm going to take the reciprocal and multiply the denominator. So the reciprocal just means you flip it. So it's going to be 16 over 11. Okay, now when I get finished here in a second, is that answer going to be a positive or a negative? Negative, right, because we've got different signs. Negative 3, it's positive 16, 11, so it's going to be a negative. Okay, now you can do this a ton of different ways. You can multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and then reduce. Your calculator can multiply those. There's no problem with that. I see something that's easy to reduce beforehand. I got that same 16 over 8 there. That's the same as 2. So now this is something I can do easy in my head. 3 times 2 is 6. And then on the bottom, all I've got is an 11. Bada bing, bada boom. You know, you don't have to reduce. You, you could have done that differently than I did. Okay, so don't panic if you wanted to do it with your calculator. If you wanted to just, if I had just one plus straight across the top, 3 times 16 is 48, be negative. And then on the bottom, 8 times 11 is 88. So now I'm looking at that and saying, well, I can take an 8 out of both of them. 48 divided by 8 is 6. 88 divided by 8 is 11. So you get the same answer. Okay, so don't panic if you do stuff differently than me. Alright, last one down there. It's division of fractions, so we're going to do it the same way. I just wrote it differently. I threw the old school division sign in there. So we're going to say this is 3 fourths times what? Negative 16 over 7. Very good. As the sign stays, you just flip top and bottom. Okay, so your answer, will it be positive or negative? Negative. Good. Now, I'm looking, because it's my preference, to see if I can reduce beforehand. Because the numbers are smaller. That's the only reason I like that. And I, I know I got a 16 and a 4. 16 over 4 is the same as 4. So on the top, 3 times my 4 is 12. On the bottom, all I got left is 7. the ladybug to work questions for you real quick. It's going to take me forever to write them down. Did y'all see my finger yesterday, Miss Phil made me? Y'all know somebody stole my finger over the summer? My giant finger? Yeah. So Miss Phil made me a replacement. Uh, it's kind of weird. Why is somebody stealing my giant finger? I don't understand. Let's 
get some zoom going on and I'll get you fixed up. Can you? I need to zoom it out to make them go higher. I'm, I'm wanting to do those 10 fill in the blanks. What can I do to make it better? Nothing? Can you mean just go slow and read them with you? That help? I think that'd probably be the best thing. All right, so you don't have to write the whole question down. You're just going to write your answer to fill in the blank, and I'll go slow and read them with you. Then we'll talk about them after we get them all done. Okay, some of y'all can read it. And, all right. Number one. The sum of a positive and a negative number is zero if blank. Well, write it down. Write it down. You're right. Thanks for telling everybody. Write it down. The sum of a positive and a negative number is zero if blank. Oh, you can read the answers. I'll see what you do. There we go. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, am I? Number two. The sum of a positive of two pop my bad, the sum of two positive numbers is a blank number. The sum of two positive numbers is a blank number. numbers is a blank number. Okay, the next one is just the opposite. Number five, the sum of a positive and negative number is positive if. What makes it be positive? The sum of a positive and negative number is positive if. Starting on number six, it turns to difference. So we're talking sub subtraction. Number six, it says the difference between two positive numbers is negative if. I don't think we discussed that. So what would get, if you're subtracting two positive numbers, what would it take to make it negative? Think about that so you can write something down. between two negative numbers is negative if what would make subtracting two negative numbers be a negative? 
Sometimes it helps me to think of little examples. three we get our multiply and divide number eight says the product of two numbers with the same sign is so we multiply with the same sign what's our answer going to be number nine says different sign the product of two numbers with different signs is what And the last one, we did division, but we didn't talk a whole lot about this question. So it says, the last number 10 says, the quotient formed by any non-zero number divided by zero is blank. What happens when you try to divide a number by zero? Then the next one that's got a two blanks, so the next one says the quotient formed by zero divided by any non-zero number is blank. So all that's talking about on number 10 is the difference in where you can put your zero. The first part would look like 2 divided by 0. What happens on that? The second part would look like 0 divided by 2. What happens on that? These are different. And okay, that's what number 10 is asking you about. yesterday. If I had 2 plus what would make that 0? Negative 2. And that is just called what I have on the screen, the additive inverse. It's the opposite. Additive inverse is always the opposite. So that was your number 1 look on that. Okay. Uh, number 2, the sum of two positive numbers is always positive. Number 3, the sum of two negative numbers is always negative. Okay, remember when the signs are the same, you keep that sign, right? Alright, number four, the sum of a positive and a negative number is negative if. Good, that's right, let's look at some examples. Right, the sum of a positive and a negative number, which one of these would give me a negative answer? Which one? The top one, because 6 is larger, right? So the question says the sum of, I can't read it from the side, sum of a positive number and a negative number is negative if the larger digit is negative. Okay? So then it would be just the opposite on that next question there. The sum of a positive and negative number is positive if the larger digit is positive. Okay? And that's, I told you all those examples is always how it helps me think through a lot of this. Alright, number six, we went to difference, so we're going to subtraction. The difference between two positive numbers is negative if. So I'm going to subtract two positive numbers and try to get a negative. Which one of these gets me a negative answer? The bottom one? Why? How can I describe that? Okay. We're taking something larger away from something smaller. Uh, if we wrote it absolute value-wise, the 4 is larger. It's got the minus sign in front of it. Describe all that, okay? And I think the next question will be <clears throat> difference between two. That one was positive, so I'm looking at number 7. The difference between two negative numbers is negative. So I need to subtract some negative numbers. So negative 4 minus negative 2, would that be positive or negative? Okay, that would be negative 2, right? What made that be a negative 2? Larger digit was negative, right? Okay. Where are we at? 8? Is that where we are? Products of two numbers, this was an easy one, product two numbers with the same sign. 
positive. Brought two numbers with different sign, number nine, negative. Okay, and then on 10 was the one I gave you the hint on. Let me write that back up here. The first part, it says the quotient formed by any non-zero number divided by zero is. What do you, it's got a math term. What do you call that when you try to divide by zero? It is undefined. Very good. You cannot have a zero on bottom. It splits something into no parts, right? Calculator will just say error, but the mathematical term is undefined. And then keep reading there. It says quotient formed by zero divided by a non-zero number. So if you flip that, zero divided by two is zero, right? Anytime zero is on top, your answer is zero. Okay. Are you all right on that? Feel pretty good. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's under the elbow. Where did I put my book? Let's see what we got cracking next. Alright, tomorrow we go to some exponents, some roots, different stuff like that. Square roots, powers, order of operations, all that kind of stuff. Okay, everybody good? Okay, good job.